Hello again, I apologize for posting this video so late. I've actually recorded recorded it after I finished the series uh, and I just I remember that I didn't actually cover OCaml option which is um, a very important part of the OCaml system. Now OCaml option is um, sort of a way of representing or a way around having the null having the null value. By default, OCaml doesn't have a null value, you know, the one that we are used to, for example, in Java or C or maybe uh, PHP. Some other languages actually do nil rather than null. Nil rather than null, but uh, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you are familiar with it. So basically, OCaml doesn't actually have a null value that can be assigned to a variable of any type. Uh, whereas, in OCaml, instead of having a null explicit null value we have a built-in type called uh, sort of a option so that means it's polymorphic an option means it can either it can either be null which is none or some value some of a big some value of that type uh, by now you should be familiar with with uh, records and unions and this is actually this as you can see is a record it can have either it can have one or two values. It can be either none or it can be some value. And some value, as we said, it's actually polymorphic. What that means is it can be anything. It can be integer float, string, boolean, um, um, an object of any type or anything, any data, basically any data type. Um, so the none case is intended to represent the null value. So the none is sort of equivalent to the null value. And the sum case handles non null values okay so we have none and sum of a please have a second look this is actually a record it's a type uh, it's a polymorphic type it's called option it can be a none which is equivalent to null or it can be sum of value any um, any other value basically now the use of this is very very impo important especially when we have exceptions and a typical example is the uh, is the division if you notice here let's say for example we have two digits uh, x equals let's say 50 and y equals maybe 10 okay and z equals 0 now if I want to divide for example let's say c or maybe d equals maybe y over z. Notice now that z is 0. And by the way, this is how we define or we declare a few variables together using the AND keyword. If we divide y by z now, and z is 0, what we get is an exception, division by 0. Well, what if we want to avoid that and say, okay, if we divide by 0, then we can have a null or none instead of having the exception. And then if we divide by anything other than 0, then we can have the resulting value. Well, that's uh, this is a typical time when we can use the option. We can use none and sum. Look at this function. This is uh, sort of my. Im I'm sorry. This is my implementation of the integer division. So if you look at it, let let, let int div x and y match y with. If y is zero, then we fail with. We basically raise an exception. If y is any other value, then we just return x divided by y. This is exactly the same or sort of equivalent to this, to the built-in uh, division. And again, so we can for example say int, I'm sorry, let d equals int div, as we said did before, y and z, I'll, div I'll divide y by z and because y is 0, um, so yes, I need to say equals, I don't know why I keep forgetting this, so int Div y and z we divide y by divide y by z. Sorry, let d equals uh, uh, int div y and z, and we do that, and we fail with the exception again. Failure can't divide by zero, which is something I explicitly put over there, as you can see with the pattern matching. Now the way around that is we can do, as you can see here, we can say let int div x and y we match y with if y is 0 then we return none which is equivalent to null as we said before and if y is anything else then we return some value some x divided by y 
and if we copy and paste this into our uh, top loop uh, let me raise this a bit so you can see it now notice now here my our function takes an int two ints and return an int whereas the function here takes two ints and return an int option now not an int but rather an int option and the function has the same name so I can copy and paste this to demonstrate how it runs and it returns a none returns none but if I divide for example now um, let's say let d equals int div and now notice that int div is the new implementation with the none and sum if I divide for example uh, x by y so x divided by y then it returns it doesn't return 5 but it returns sum 5 yes because it returns an int option now we remember in the slides we said option is polymorphic so it can be of any type so now it's returning some five and there it's returning none well when I deal with the with with division for example or anything else I need the actual value I don't need the sum I don't need the option either none or sum. I need an actual value so how can I actually access the actual value well we need another function to do some sort of pattern matching if the pattern is none then we, we return whatever we want to return when the case is none for example zero or minus one or anything and when it's some anything then we return that thing enough talking my code for doing that would be something like this I have a function called contents x and I match x with if x is some value c then then we return c if x is none return for example zero or anything else return anything else that you want to uh, return when the case is none or equivalent to null so what I can have here is because D now is some 5 I can say let D for example quote and that's valid in OCaml we can have a variable name with that as uh, like that that's a variable name and I can say contents of D and I D dash now should be the integer value of 5 rather than some 5 I hope this is making sense using the non sum or using the option in general to uh, deal with null cases because OCaml doesn't have null now for any of my future videos either in this series or in the OCaml data structure series or anything else if I have a pattern something similar to this when I deal with data structures for example lists or anything if I have it with fail with then uh, the case should be dealt with properly using the OCaml option using some and none so if I do it that way then that's not uh, the best way of doing it I should do it I should have done it with um, I should have done it with some and none please write this down make sure you remember this note for any of my upcoming videos remember this pattern of using some and none and don't use exception uh, uh, you don't throw an exception when you unless of course if you need to but don't throw an exception when you have something like this a pattern like this rather use the none and sum and then access the contents of the option value of the sum and none using the something similar to this contents function always remember that the option is actually um, polymorphic so we can have anything there I hope you you're enjoying this these videos uh, sometimes I feel guilty because I remember that I missed something so I had to uh, record it again and then put it back into the series again remember this when, uh, during, for my future videos and thanks very much again and I'll see you next time